Shout out Cory X Kenshin. This story between a couple that I have today gave me the chill. It creeped me the hell out because you would never expect something so weird and odd like this. Shout out to y'all for DMing me these strange cases on Instagram. I love y'all. Y'all already know what I'm about to say. Go get your snack. I just started off in your world. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about Julian. Julian and his girlfriend were Christians, meaning they was gonna wait to get married till she turns 18, and Julian's girlfriend was gonna wait till she's 18 for them to do anything at all. So the two beautiful couples decided to go on a picnic one following day. They drive up this dirt road, and as he's driving on this road that's in this forest, he noticed something that looks like a dead animal laying on the ground, but it was odd and it was shaped weird and bigger. So he really didn't know what it was, but it looked like roadkill. And he tapped his girlfriend and told him, did you see that? Did you see what it looked like? But the girl didn't see nothing. Cause she didn't care, she wasn't paying attention. So as they kept driving, they finally made it to their picnic destination. They had this waterfall there. It was a beautiful place for them to have this picnic. They opened the back trunk, they got their things, sat down and had a good time. <laughs> So after an hour of them being there, they pack their things up, get in the car, and they leave. As they're driving, Julian then remembers that roadkill that was on the side of the road because for some reason it was in the back of his head. He couldn't get it out. He asked her, when we pass it up again, do you mind if I go check that out? She just told him, yeah, but please be quick because we got to be back by 3 p.m. because that's what they told their family. He said, okay. So as he kept driving, he said, you know what? I passed it up. I'm going to get out and I'm going to go check it out. She said, yeah, but remember, you have to be quick because we have to be there about 3 p.m. So he gets out, he go checks it out. Now, when he go checks it out, it's in a distance where the trees is in the way. So when he walk on this road, he make a slight turn. Now the trees is in the way and she can't see him. Now, as he's jogging around looking for this big dead animal that looks kind of odd, he finally spots it. When he spots it, he goes up closer to it to get a better look at it. As he's getting a better look at it to know what it is, as soon as he gets real close, it just turns black. Now the girlfriend Carolyn noticed that her boyfriend Julian is not back yet. Time is ticking. She's keep looking at her watch. He want to make it in time. So she's looking out the window trying to find him. But remember, he walked out the distance because the road turns. So all she can see is trees and road. She don't know where he's at. As more time goes on, she is now not frustrated with him. She's concerned that something happened to him. So she gets out her car. Remember, it's daylight now. It's night, night time. And she goes in that road that led to the waterfall where they had the picnic at because he ran back. And she kept walking. And when she made this right, she sees something in the middle of the road. And it freaked her out. But she didn't know what it was. She couldn't process it at all. She was just freaked out, frozen. And then whatever this was that's standing in the middle of the road, looking at her, started moving towards her. She's frozen and she can't do nothing. And then 3 p.m. hits and the family noticed that. And and the two couple is not back yet. And that was kind of odd because they always make it back home on time. They was very strict on that. But then as this mom looked outside of her house to see if they're in the front or if they're pulling up, she noticed this bottle tucked in this fence. You no, know, this, this trash bottle tucked in this fence. So she went to go get it, pull it out of the fence and she noticed this rolled up paper. She unfolds this paper after she gets it out of the water bottle and she freezes and started panicking because of what she read. Saying that Julian and Carolyn has been kidnapped and on this note was a lot of satanic things on it the handwriting was very horrible but she know what this meant and they said do not call the police or contact them or they will not return so even though she knew that if she contacts the police they will not return something can possibly happen to her she called the police anyway so the police come to investigate this they investigate the note and things about to get even much more strange Seriously, if y'all don't have y'all snacks now, I don't know what y'all doing. <laughs> now, when the police was examining this note, it said ONA. ONA is a satanic cult and they do not like Christians. Remember, Caroline and Julian were both Christians. There was a Christian couple and they do human sacrifices on people. And so this was looking like really, really weird. Then that's when they decided to do this huge police search. They looked everywhere using helicopters and they could not find them at all. Several days passed by and this farmer was driving his car in this rugged national park. And he noticed a woman and a lady with barely any clothes on in this wooded place. 
The farmer drove next to them and said, do y'all need help? Are y'all okay? They pleaded and said, yes, it was Carolyn and it was Julian and they went to the hospital. Both was very traumatized, had cuts, bruises everywhere, very much sunburned. But what happened? Now, that day when Julian got out the car to go see what that animal was on the side of the road, when he got close to check it out, he heard something behind him. But before he could turn around, something smashed him in the back of his head and it went black because he was knocked out. When he opened his eyes, he realized he's tied to this tree. In the middle of the woods, it is now dark time. He don't know where he's at right now and he's freaking out. And as he's looking around, he noticed this knife. It was placed perfectly to where he can able to get it and cut himself free. These people did this to him on purpose. And Julian picks a direction and started running. Now remember when his girlfriend was in the middle of the road and she seen that something in the middle of the road? It was actually a person dressed in this all black. He chased her, grabbed her, he tied her up, blindfolded her, and put her in the woods. But when she was placed in the woods, she wasn't really in the woods, she was right next to a road. When she hears her attacker runs away, the car pull up, picks her up, put her in the trunk. And for hours and hours and hours, she was in this trunk tied up. Then the car comes to a stop, takes her out of the car and drags her deep into the woods. At this time, she know that in her head, she's about to die because it's nothing she can do. Now what this anonymous person did that's dressed in all black, took her blindfold off to where she can see and laid her down and he started digging. She realized that this person is digging her own grave. Now when this hole got really, really deep, picked her up, threw her in the hole. The only thing that she can do now was pray. But she noticed that he started walking off. The hole was so deep that she couldn't actually see him walking off, but she could hear him leaving. Almost like her prayer was answered. Let's go back to Julian. He's still running out there, asking for help, screaming for help, hoping that he gets a response back. And he does. But when he hears this person or this response back, he noticed that it's a female voice. It's Carolyn, it's his girlfriend. So he runs in the direction where he hear the noise coming from and he's still screaming to her. She's screaming to him until he finally gets towards her. Remember, Carolyn was still tied up. She still was in a position where she couldn't really get out. Julian hops in the hole, cuts her loose. They talking to each other about what the hell is going on. They don't know, they both confused, but they feel like that person is gonna come back. So those two hurry up and left the hole and walked away. And Julian had that knife just in case of anything happens. As they was walking, they found this sleeping bag laying next to this tree. They check out this sleeping bag and they notice it had food and water in it. And they could not understand how was this possible because they literally in the middle of nowhere. So maybe the guy that kidnapped them is playing some type of game with them and they don't know it yet. For the next 48 hours, them two will walk in these woods, sleep in this one sleeping bag and cuddle together. Cause at night it would get really cold. And when the daytime hit, it would get extremely hot. That's why when it was found, they had them sunburns. And they would keep walking and keep walking. And then they noticed they back at the same spot they started. This deep hole that that anonymous person digged up for Carolyn. They made a huge, huge circle and they lost. Anxiety is growing by the moment after a search at night turned up and the hunt is intensifying. But them stumbling back in this huge circle saved their life. They don't find that anonymous creepy person, but they see another backpack. So they stumble towards it, open it up, and it's more life supplies. They got lucky. But this time it was a map of the area, but they think the backpack belongs to the attacker that kidnapped him. So they was like, you know what? Let's hurry up and grab it and let's leave before this person comes back for his things and us. And because this map was in his backpack, they looked at the map and it helped them find a way to this road. And luckily, perfect timing hit because the farmer was driving and he seen the two stumble out on the road and the farmer stopped his car, picked them up and brought him to the hospital. Charlie, Charlie. stay clear, move, move, move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Now, when the police investigated the whole area where this person dig the hole at, they found the shovel, they found some rope, and they found duct tape. The police noticed that all of these things belong to Julian. They confronted Julian and said, there's something deeper we don't know about this story. You cannot be telling us everything because these items belong to you. And after some serious police pressure, he gave in. 
here's what really happened that day of the picnic. Why did I get the goosebumps when I say that? Because how crazy this is about to get. So when Julian claimed to see Roadkill that following day, and when Julian got out the car to go investigate what it was, when she was telling him, hurry up, we have to be home by 3 p.m. The reason why he really wanted to get out is because there was no roadkill. He made it completely up. He never seen nothing on the road at all. <laughs> it was an excuse for him to get out the car. And he dressed up as this anonymous person because he had stashed this all black outfit in the woods. That's why he placed it and he parked in a place where she couldn't see him. So yes, Julian was that anonymous person the whole time. But it took a lot of time of him putting all of this on, getting a rope, the knife, the duct tape. And by the time he got everything and he started walking, he noticed she was standing in the middle of the road. And that was him that tackled her, tied her up, put her in the trunk, and they drove deep out in these woods. It was so deep that it took six hours for them to get to where they needed to get. So when he dragged her in the woods, he made sure to show her the shovel and make sure to dig up the hole. He wanted her to see it all, wanted her to fear for her life purposely. Now that this hole's so deep and she's still tied up in this hole, he ran away, he took off all his things, and out of nowhere, she hear him from the distance, screaming for help. Hello! And then that's when she screams for help. And then that's when they meet each other. And that's when they go crazy about what the hell is going on, and he cuts her loose, and that explains why they had the backpacks on the trees as they was walking. And when they went in that big circle, Back to the hole, he purposely done that because he placed another backpack with supplies there so they can survive. But, but, the police didn't ask them. So Carolyn didn't know none of this. He said, no, she truly believed that we was being stalked, we was kidnapped by this anonymous person. Next, and then what's your reason by doing all of it? Well, because they were both Christians and she really wanted to wait until they got married to have that intimacy, that sexual intimacy. She wanted to get married first and he could not wait. He wanted it now, so he set the whole thing up. So y'all remember when I said it was cold during the night and hot during the day well when it was cold during the night he was telling her we're about to die we're stuck we're stranded we're lost we're cold let's have some intimacy to warm up our bodies she said no still so he wanted her to know that you're about to die god want this for us anyways we're going to get married so we might as well just get sexual with each other right now and she would say no me editing this video that's really crazy like I don't condone this because I'm not for it, but he should have cheated. He should have just cheated on her instead of her putting instead of putting her through this hell. Because he ended up getting arrested for this and serving some time. To make matters even worse, y'all never getting back together. So you're never going to get that from her regardless. Julian knows like I'm about to get thrown in prison. I'm not sticking around for this. He bolts. He somehow manages to get a fake Indian passport. He dyes his hair, his eyebrows, and he darkens his skin somehow. His identity was exposed and he was extradited back to Australia. Yeah, I just started off in your world. Yeah, I just started off with your bitch.